Good evening, y'all, and welcome back to the kitchen. I'm going to make a uh, southern chicken fried steak today. I went by a little store that's not too far from us, and I don't go there real often. I forget about them, but they had a great sale on. They had ground chuck 80-20, and they have their own little market, so it's good meat. $1.97 a pound, so I got a bunch of that. And they had some bacon, a 12-ounce package, $1.68, so I bought me some bacon. But I also bought a package of cube steak that they had on sale. And it is, a lot of times your cube steak will have a lot of um, that fibrous tissue running through it. This is just pretty red cube steak. So what I'm going to do is for lunch today, or it's a little after lunch, but anyhow, we're going to eat chicken fried steak. And I'm going to show y'all how I uh, doctor up some instant mashed potatoes. And I may open a can of English peas or something to go with it. But that's going to make some, I'm going to have some milk gravy. And that's going to be our meal. But I wanted to show y'all, just in case some of you don't do it or wonder how it's done or whatever. I'm going to show y'all how I make chicken fried steak. I've got my grease getting hot in my big, I think it's a 13-inch Le Shea skillet. It's the enameled cast iron, and I love to cook in a cast iron skillet because of the even heat distribution, and the same goes for the stove and the Le Crochet. So I've got it heating, and I want it to get to about 350 because I want my grease good and hot when I put my steak in, or else the batter will fall off. And then it doesn't take long to cook it a few minutes on each side. The same method that I'm using today, you can use to fry chicken or whatever that you would want to put a little bit of a batter on. Now I've already onion and garlic powdered, salted and peppered one side of my meat. So I'm going to take a little bit of flour and just sprinkle on that just to kind of seal that seasoning in and flip it over and do the same thing on the other side. And then I'm going to dip it into buttermilk. Now if you don't have buttermilk, you can take a little bit of regular whole milk and crack you an egg or two in it and whip it up together and um, use that just like where I'm using the buttermilk today. So I'm going to turn my steaks over where I can season the other side because you want them seasoned both sides. These are just gorgeous, gorgeous cube steaks. I hope y'all can see I'm going to pepper them really good. I'm going to tell you this. If you can't find cube steak, but you can find round steak, you can get round steak and tenderize it and pound it down like this, and it makes really good um, chicken fried steak also. Okay, I'm going to sprinkle it with garlic. Just, we want it to be flavorful. And you want to put your seasoning on it, and then you want to put some flour to kind of lock that in where it doesn't wash off when you dip it in the buttermilk. Chicken tenders are really good cooked like this. Okay, I'm going to put my flour on it again. I could rub them around in that flour, but then and if you want to really, really crust on something, you can dip it twice into the buttermilk and the flour. Let me check my grease and see how hot it's getting. It's getting pretty good. I'll probably have to put some more flour in there. But I want to show you. You just want to put your, your steak into your buttermilk. Make sure it gets on it good. Both sides. And then you're going to take your steak and put it in your flour and press it. You want to press that flour into that buttermilk. So that's what makes the batter on it. Okay. And it makes your fingers all goopy and nasty and that's okay. It's worth it. Now this one is just about battered right. See it has all of the flour and stuff on it. I'm just going to lay it right there. And try to get another one done. I get it on there and then I go back and try to press some into it because you want it really battered. That just makes it appealing. 
I'm going to see if my grease is hot enough. Yeah, it is. So I'm going to get these two in the grease. Let them start cooking. You don't want to crowd it. <clears throat> you don't want to crowd your grease because that will cool it down and your batter will all fall off. Now when you get them out of the grease, um, you want to put them on a wire rack. You don't want to put them down where your batter will stick to a paper towel and all of it will come off. Now see, you could dip this again in the buttermilk and you could dip it in panko crumbs if you wanted to. I want to be sure it gets plenty of flour sticking to that buttermilk. And then you just let them cook to a golden brown and then they'll be ready uh, to turn over and then bring them out and put them on your wire rack. And I'll show y'all. I usually get a rack and put it on a cookie sheet. Now I'm going to put some paper towel down under the rack to catch some of the grease. That just makes the cleanup a little bit easier. Rack, I didn't get the right one out. It's just going over the pan, but the main thing is you don't want them laying down flat on something. Okay. And when they get good and brown on the other side, they'll be done because they're not real thick. So see that good crust on them, the batter? Yummy. So just a minute and we'll be back over here and put the other ones in and then I'll show y'all how I do the mashed potatoes. Okay, I've taken one of the first steaks out and I'm going to take the next one out. I'm just going to put it on the rack and let it cool. I'm going to heat my grease back up just a little bit hotter. One in and... Then the flour that I've been um, dipping them in, I'm going to uh, sift a little bit and I will use it to make the gravy with. And I'm just cooking them in vegetable oil. And you don't deep fry them. You want some oil in your skillet. This is probably about a half inch deep. Just enough to come up on the sides of them. So that you can cook them, but you do not want them. You don't deep fry a uh, chicken fried steak. My steak has browned really well. I'll put that one on the other side. This is juicy. And you want to be real careful when you're picking it up because you can make your batter fall off. I'm going to brown it just a little bit more and then I will. Um, drain some of the grease out and I'll make us some milk gravy to go with it or creamy gravy, whatever you want to call it. Okay, I'm getting ready to make the uh, milk gravy and I've got my heat off. I didn't measure this and I'm going to put it on a medium low and just uh, slightly brown the flour and I'm going to season it with my usual seasoning, salt and pepper, onion and garlic. And some of this grease got just a little bit darker than I would like. But I'm going to go ahead and use it. Now I'm going to add a little of the oil. I dipped some of my oil out. So I'll add a little bit back in. But just remember, you're going to use uh, the equal amounts. I'm sorry for what I, whatever I said. Equal amounts of flour and oil. And then you add your liquid till you uh, get it to the thickness that you want it. Some people want their gravy runny, and some want it a little thicker. Now to go on the chicken fried steak, I want it a little bit thicker. So I'm going to add some seasoning in while that's doing. Because I'm not going to brown it a whole lot. I just want it uh, to be sure the flour's cooked. You don't want a raw flour taste. Most of the time, our chicken fried steaks are served with cream gravy, which is very white. You barely brown your flour. I 
just want to be sure that it's cooked. And then I'm just going to take my milk jug and I'm going to pour and stir until I get it as thick as I think I want it. Um, sometimes I use canned evaporated milk and dilute it just a little bit and that makes a really rich gravy. But today I'll just use whole milk. Now, if you wanted brown gravy, I've told y'all this before, you just keep browning this. And this is exactly how you make a roux for gumbo. You just keep browning your flour and your oil until you get it as dark as you want it. Now, I didn't put any salt in there. I'm glad I remembered that. It's already getting really thick, and it's darker than usual, but it'll taste good. It's got those thick, the pan scrapings in there. I'm just going to keep stirring this and adding some milk till I get it where I want it, and then I'll show y'all when I get it ready and put it on my, uh, uh oh, on my steak and potatoes. Okay, the instant potatoes, and I, this is what I use. This is my favorite, the Idahoan roasted garlic. They call for two cups of boiling water. I'm going to add some black pepper. They, they already have the roasted garlic in them, which is generally sufficient flavoring. I'm going to add butter, and I'm going to add a half a stick of butter to it. And then I'm going to add, when after I get them done, I'm going to add my secret ingredient is about a fourth uh, to a third of a cup of sour cream. And that makes your instant potatoes pliable and they don't get rubbery and they taste like homemade mashed potatoes. And it's so much easier. So if you'll add the sour cream, I don't know what it does, but it does. Okay, my nectar kettle is kettle is ready and I've already measured exactly two cups of water in here. So, and I usually just use my whisk and mix it up. And you can, when you do them like this, add a little bit of shredded cheese and a little bacon bits and it is almost as good as the inside of a good baked potato. But this is my go-to in a, in a hurry when I'm wanting to get my meal ready. Okay, they're just about rehydrated. So I'll add in... That's probably a third of a cup of sour cream. There you have it. And they're as good as homemade potatoes. Don't have to worry about them going bad. Just keep them on the shelf and fix them when you get ready for them. So, okay, I've got my cherry tomatoes, green onions, lettuce, and I like to add a little bit of coleslaw mix into my salads to give it some crunch. I don't put a whole lot. And then I pick out that hard and wild, I guess, to make it way more and get more for their money. I don't like those big old hard pieces in it. But I want some coleslaw mix in each one. And then I'm going to slice off a little bit of uh, lettuce. Now, if I were going to have to wait to serve this, I would have chopped my tomatoes on the bottom because that way the juice wouldn't make everything uh, get soggy, the juice from the tomatoes. But we're fixing to eat, so I'm just getting everything ready here. And then I'll just toss this a little bit. And see, when you put the coleslaw mix in there, you get some extra color, too. I like that. Okay. Now, let's cut my little tomatoes. Now, I've told y'all before 
about this Rada, R-A-D-A is the brand, tomato knife. And it's wonderful. It does not squash your tomatoes. You just saw them in half and it just, it just cuts them. So I'll put us, well, I didn't cut all the way through, but if you're cutting a big tomato, it don't mash it, it just cuts it for you. I like to cut them in half because that way you get a little of the juice out into your lettuce and whatever your dressing is. Now I probably do French dressing or sun-dried tomato and he will do, as usual, ranch. And then I just um, take my scissors and snip them. over the top of each salad and then I'm going to get my knife and cut the bottom part, the white part This was one whole bunch. It wasn't a huge bunch, but it was a nice bunch of green onions for these two salads. It'll add a wonderful flavor to our salad. And then I'm just going to sprinkle a little bit of cheddar cheese over the top. That is garbage little bit of cheese and I'm ready to plate the steak and potatoes. I got the tea making and we're fixing to eat here in a minute. Okay, I've got the plate and I'm just going to get a steak and put it on the plate. And I'm going to dip some of the gravy on it. going to put potatoes on the side. And we like, now here it is, without anything on the potatoes, but we like gravy on our potatoes as well. So I'm going to put a little gravy on the potatoes, and this plate is ready to put on the table with my uh, salad. Okay, I've got our salad made and our chicken fried steak with the gravy on it and the potatoes and we're fixing to sit down and have a meal. Y'all, Troy's at the table waiting for me to get our plates on the table so we're fixing to sit down and have us some chicken fried steak, mashed potatoes and gravy and green salad. I hope y'all have learned something new or I hope it jogs your memory of something that mama or grandma or aunt whoever or you did in the past and maybe you'll want to do it again. If you'll watch the sales, you can get the cube steaks pretty reasonable. I think these were like $2.99 a pound. The whole thing, the whole four pieces I think was $4 and something. That's a pretty cheap meal. So y'all gather your stuff up and make you some of this. It sure is good. See, that's what people in the South enjoy. That's why y'all need to visit if you haven't and enjoy some of the food. The good Lord bless y'all. Come back here in a day or two and we'll do something else good.